We've been staying in the enchanting city of Dijon, France, which sits right at the top of the Burgundy wine region. While here, we've indulged in some of the local world famous cuisine and even took a small group tour of the Burgundy wine region itself. In this episode, we're heading on a train south to explore more. This is Bone. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Rach. For years now, we've enjoyed traveling the world together near and far. Whether it's creating lifelong memories, diving into distant cultures of the world, or just satisfying our craving to go somewhere new. We invite you to come along to experience life's journey with us. Well, good morning again. Mm -hmm. Here in Dijon, France. We are going to be heading to Bone. And Bone is only a 20 minute train ride away. And uh, they, it seems like the trains leave every 10, 15 minutes. Just had a little bit of a breakfast. And we're going to hop on the train and go explore Bone today. Pretty excited about that. It looks like a really cool town. We were there for just a short while yesterday, but want to get a better look today. Nice train station here yeah, in Dijon. Pretty big. Before. Pretty big. Bigger than I thought. Easy to get in and out. And very convenient to where we're staying. The train's going the wrong way. We <laughs> had to switch seats. <laughs> Train tickets to and from cost 10 euros per person each way. So all in all about 24 US dollars. As we said before, traveling through France on the train is easy, reliable, and makes a lot of sense cost-wise. It takes about 20 minutes to get the bone from Dijon, and there's a few stops along the way in all the different wine villages of Burgundy. These day trips are nice since we're not hauling our luggage all over the place. Well, here we are in the beautiful little town of Bone in Burgundy. So this time of year here you get all kinds of cloudy days, uh, rain, fortunately not today. But we're just happy to be here and wait until you see how beautiful this little place is. Wow. Sort of fortress here on the city limits. Bone is a town of about 20,000 people and is the hub of the region's wine business. Compared to Dijon, it's much smaller in size, however, there's no lack of experiences here. Thanks to its charming old town, world famous cuisine, and surrounding vineyards, which one could argue makes some of the best wine in all the world, it definitely is a major tourist spot here in the region. First things first, let's grab some lunch. The main square actually has several good spots to do so. Let's escargot. Well, we had to order the beef bourguignon again. It's just so good here. We got the escargot. Mm -hmm. 
and a dessert this time and some red wine. What do you think, Grinch? Good. Well, escargot. This is if you're gonna get escargot, this is the area to do it. Mm. So good. Something with the sauce. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like olive oil and butter. Butter, butter garlic sauce. Butter garlic. It is so good. Really good, isn't it? gotta do empty out the sauce to get the bread. Oh. Beef bourguignon. One yesterday didn't have you have potatoes. Potatoes. Is this a spin though? Yeah. Something different. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is like a peach or mm -hmm. pear. Pear. Give it a try. Let's see what it is. Like an ice cream. All right, next we're going to check out Bone's most famous landmark and historical building, the hospice. Hospice de Bone. <laughs> <laughs> it is centuries old, very famous, and it's got a big story to tell. We'll get into that when we get there. What an amazing building. Wow. It's like a church. Like a church. Yeah. It's like a medieval looking structure. Typically, a hospice is not a tourist attraction, but here in Bone, it is the number one attraction. All right, so we just got our tickets. It's 18 euros a person to get in. And it's not not too cheap. And they give you an English brochure with all kinds of information. The Hospice de Bone dates all the way back to the year 1443 in which it was founded by the Chancellor of Burgundy to be a hospital for the poor. It's amazing that this marvelous structure dating back so many centuries has been almost perfectly preserved. Just stunning. It's best known for this, the room of the poor. On each side of the room are rows of beds accommodating the sick. Rumor has it that there wasn't just one patient per bed. Sometimes there was up to three. Ew, imagine that. Almost like a real life Willy Wonka's grandparents thing going on.
It's really amazing to get a sense of this incredible philanthropy that went on so many years ago, especially before modern medical tools in medicine. If you're one really into Gothic and Flemish architecture, you could definitely spend a lot of time here, there's no doubt. It's certainly impressive and there's a ton to learn and a ton to see. It would kind of be a crime to come here and not pay a visit though, almost like going to Rome and not seeing the Colosseum. This was actually still a hospital until 1971, which is hard to believe. Something they still do here is their annual wine auction every November. And from what we hear, it is the most famous charity wine auction held every year. And speaking of wine, this town has tons and tons of wine shops, including this impressive one right across the main entrance to the hospice. Well, the sun's finally coming out. We haven't seen it in a few days. Yeah. We gotta head back to the train station. It's been a fun afternoon here in Bone, but we're gonna try to make one more stop. I don't know if we're gonna be able to, if they're open or not, but there is a wine, Burgundy Wine Estate that's actually here in town. So we're gonna see if we can stop in there and maybe do a tasting, get a bottle. Hopefully we can get in there. Okay, we have arrived here. An awesome looking gate. We are at the Domain Bouchard Pate Fils, I think. Bouchard Pere et Fils. Right here in town. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> they are closed, closed until January. And their shop, their tastings, I guess they don't need to sell anymore. They have reached their quota for the year. That's what Jeremy told us about that's what happened. The yeah, yeah, they reached their quota. Time to go on holiday. Call it a, call it a year. We are looking to go to wineries in December. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really. Yeah, I mean, this is COVID times. I don't know how much yeah, that no, is playing into it. Look at this car. That was cool. Well, I really enjoyed Bone. I did too. Beautiful little village here in Burgundy. And just uh, the food, the town, the views, the wine everything about it, the history, the hospice, it's a must see. I'd say about three hours here is probably pretty Enough? good. Enough? Yeah, yeah, three hours. Yeah, you want to have a meal. Yeah. You want to go see the hospice. I think it's kind of neat. I mean, it, it could be a cool place to stay too. If yeah. There are enough restaurants. It's a great location to stay if you're looking to go visit wineries. So check this out, this is one of those machines just parked on the side of the road that it has, dirt in it. has dirt in it, but I imagine it carries grapes as well. Looks like it does.
If you're planning a trip to France, we'd highly recommend you make it a point to visit Burgundy, especially if you are food and wine people like we are. As travelers, these are the kind of trips that you live for and we'll talk about for the rest of your lives. And as we are on this train, I can't help but look out the window and imagine what it would have looked like almost 2,000 years ago when there were monks growing grapes in all these vineyards. And also wondering, how many of these great Burgundy wines will I be able to try in my lifetime? Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to our channel for more travel videos like this. Lorsque celui-ci est en mouvement, prenez garde également à l'écart entre le marchepied et le quai. Lors de votre descente SNCF, euh, le... les trains...